This show is important. Now you might say, well, if it's so important, why would they only give you eight episodes? Well, that's a good question. It's a really good question. Why do I only have eight episodes? Doesn't matter. Tonight we're talking about immigration. The whole country is loaded with immigrants, as we know. But no matter what you think, if they should be here or not, you have to admit they're hard workers, the hardest workers in the country. You go to the Korean deli, you got the 40-year-old guy stocking the shelves while the eight-year-old kid works a register, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, there's three Mexicans outside guarding 11 bruised peaches, you know? And they got the, uh, they got that 102-year-old grandfather sitting on a crate at three o'clock in the morning picking snow peas in 10-degree weather. <laughs> His first 80 years was like he spent an idyllic Sukong Delta the last two years on Earth, he's like wrestling a pack of sour cream and onion potato chips out of some kid's North Face. Um, oh, well, immigration. Give me, give us your tired, your poor. But leave the guy with the ticking Koran back in Saudi Arabia, please. <laughs> I don't like the fact that every minority piggybacks on the black experience of racism either. People come here from all over the world, they get here, jobs, whatever, fine. But then they call America racist because one hillbilly community leader dares to question their presence. Hey, we even let Russell Crowe run around punching our American citizens in the face and we give him awards for it. <laughs> and realistically, people say close the borders. You can't close the borders. What are you gonna do, build a wall? Even if you built a wall, the work would be so hard, we have to get a bunch of Mexicans to come over here and do it. <laughs> a lot of people don't do that kind of work. Now listen, stop all immigration from now. That's the question there. Jim, before I start, may I say, sadly, that is probably your nicest sweater, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you actually got up today and you looked in the mirror and you said, yeah, this is the one for tonight. <laughs> That's really miserable. But uh, what do you think? Should we stop all immigration for now, Jim? Well, dressed like Alex Rieger, yes, I think we should. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got to stop immigration, and there is a way to do it. Uh, it's pretty simple. All you got to do is put up a bunch of landmines around the border and have it patrolled by coyotes with AIDS. <laughs> well, it's, it's a way. He's not saying it's the most sympathetic way. Um, Anybody else want to say immigration? I'd like to tie that, that AIDS thing does have something to do with immigration. Did you see the Haitians jumping off the boat in Miami? Oh, right? uh, yes. If you One in on seven it. Haitians has AIDS. Even the sharks weren't biting these people. These people. <laughs> <laughs> One... <laughs> One guy got bit and, like, the shark died before he did. But look. <laughs> All right. What about... Uh... Middle Easterners, is it, a really, is it racist to not worry about anyone coming over except Middle Easterners? Is it yes. racist to single them out as not getting, uh, you know, issued visas? Only single out the people from countries that end in the word Stan. It's <laughs> not a bad idea. Really? I'm from Texas, and we have an immigration problem, but then we have no problem getting our grass cut, our dishes washed, <laughs> or our oil changed. So it's not a bad thing. Well, what about that? What about the fact that these immigrants do a lot of American jobs? Anybody? I, who was doing it before they got here? Americans. We were, no, we were as the immigrants. We were the original immigrants, all of us. Okay, so they got to put their time in. Top yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, I agree, but now the problem with that is kind of when we were the immigrants, we came over and we had a tough, well, you had like a three-week boat ride and then like weeded out all the weaklings so only the strong survived. Yeah. Now, like you take a three-hour plane ride, you're here in the country, so you don't even work for it. That's it's true. not even racist, though. It's not racist. It's not that you don't want people coming here. It's just like, it's Middle Eastern men. Nobody minds big-titted models from Sweden showing up. <laughs> well... <laughs> Janine, you're understandably in shock at this point. <laughs> you like to talk about, uh, I don't know, bilingual. Let's talk about bilinguality. A lot of people get mad at bilinguality. Is there and they pronounce it correctly. As, as oh, no. I was hoping you wouldn't call me on that. <laughs> Damn it, Janine. No, there's not. Bilingual. But Whatever. bilingual. I have the same problem when I try to say Christina Aguilaria. <laughs> And I do try to say that. <laughs> well, actually, I, I, I don't know why so many people get so upset with the, the, the possibility that there's a share, you know, more than one language in this country, especially when Americans expect that when they travel abroad that everyone's going to speak American, and if they don't, somehow English, the American traveler... American, <laughs> English, somehow that the, 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 the American traveler somehow put off by that. I don't, understand, I don't think it's a, it's, it's a bad thing to have a multilingual culture. You know why it's a bad thing? Because I can't go into Dwayne Reed and get a pack of gum in under 20 minutes. <laughs> there it is! Bob. I know, There's I know that's not a big thing. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> the voice of reason, I Nick, don't follow. I think it's bad if we yeah. try to make it, you know, mandatory. I think that's a bad thing. But no, the the different languages, the more people know, no, it's mm-hmm. beautiful. And you go to Montreal, they know the guy picking up garbage knows English and French. So you feel like an idiot. You're like going, wow, you pick up garbage and you know two languages? <laughs> Hell, I, I know one it's, and I butcher it. It seems to be only, only Americans that have a problem with being multilingual, whereas other other countries. That's because well, in our country we have a thousand different cultures. But I don't think a, it's a, a thousand problem. different languages. It's not a problem in France. Deodorant's a problem. But the, <laughs> I know that was hacky, but I was on the spot. And I got a camera on it. <laughs> well, what about this question that'll probably bring this to a horrible screeching halt? The uh, I thought I did. That. What if we do monitor? How would you monitor immigration? Isn't it really just like the government's like, look, we pretend everyone's. Or roust up some Mexicans, put it on the front page of the paper and say, hey, INS is working. You can't stop immigration. You can't monitor people coming in. Nobody can. It's not only is it out of control, there's nothing you can do. All right, that's not a question. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you think the government just pretends there's something you can do and really there's people sit around arguing about this, but there's really no answer. Why is there no answer? Put the military. Why not? It's not that tough. It's too big. The the borders are too big. It's impossible. It isn't. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back when you talk about sexual harassment. If you hold on, I don't know if Janine will stay, but we're hoping she'll stay, so we're gonna have to hold her down so that she can't. <laughs> We all know stories about sexual harassment in that workplace, yes? It's late at night, you're sitting there. What the hell is that? Uh, it's late at night, you're sitting there, the boss comes over, he's breathing alcohol and cigarette breath onto your neck and whispering, I'll give you a weekend update if you do it. All right, I'll do it. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I blacked out for a minute. <laughs> Seriously, though, a lot of women are placed in uncomfortable situations, and even some guys. So uh, the point is, what is the climate? Should we? Is the only answer to ban flirting and joking in the office no, because the guy's not going to show up for work. <laughs> I mean, why is a guy who's been married 20 years, three kids, so what do you think? You think he wants to go to the tire factory? I mean, he's there to, he wants to see the secretary with the nice tits, you know. Every, seriously. He's, he's right. True, but too, bleak. Everybody's too sensitive. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not here to spread good cheer, but no. He's absolutely right. Everybody is too, you can't even, like, little innocuous things are not taken as offensive and vicious. Where, like, as a male, if you see a female coworker and she has a nice uh, outfit, and you go, hey, touch nice camel toe. All of a sudden, you're a bad guy. Well, but see, for an example, that was inappropriate here. But, like, where is something, like, if you go to somebody at Mardi Gras, show me your tits. Everyone thinks that's okay, but if you say it's like Katie Couric on the Today Show, it's inappropriate. <laughs> so does it matter where you work for these things? Well, who that's wants my to see her tits in the first place? Look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now look, Chris Rock is famous for the the routine that, uh, oh, you wish he was here now doing it in Mac. Um, <laughs> yeah. Come on out, Chris. Chris. Chris Rock did the routine about sexual harassment. He said if Clarence Thomas looked like Denzel Washington, they wouldn't even call it sexual harassment because it's only ugly guys. If he was like, if he looked like Denzel, he'd go, hey, I put a pubic hair in your coke. And she'd be like, oh, Clarence, you're so nasty. And start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> now, Janine, do you feel that there's a certain amount of truth to looks affecting, like, uh, how people feel they're treated sexually? Probably, but it goes both ways. There's both genders right. would be guilty of, of responding to that. But you know where I, if there's another level if my, if I may introduce this to the dialogue or debate here of, uh, <laughs> this debate, uh, uh, of sexual harassment. I feel I'm being sexually harassed by HBO. I, I cannot take any more of their supposed documentaries, which are these <laughs> exploit, like last night was Cat House, G-String Di- Divas, <laughs> Real Sex, documentaries that they are harassing me. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that they keep foisting um, the, the sex trade upon the audience and making it look like tons right. of fun. You know under, what I mean? Like, they, like, isn't this exciting? Under the these, guise of being, they, uh, you know, under, They're authentic. pretending it's a documentary, so I feel like I'm being sexually harassed by HBO. Yeah, well, even those hookers, the hookers at the point thing, I mean, those things, That's you know. the only one that borders on showing you how bleak a lifestyle it can That's be. what I'm saying. It's the only one I like, too. The right. other ones are... <laughs> Terrible. I agree with Janine. You guys are pigs. Now listen. Um, 
Janine, now, not to, you are the woman, but have you ever been sexually harassed to, no. other than by the HBO people? <laughs> oh, no, I guess we'll be seeing your special this year. Now listen. No. I like it's on HBO. the news when they always introduce it as sexual harassment. Yeah, yeah. When they call it that, because I guess harassment, I guess it's too much like her ass, so it's like, oh, so the news guy, harassment. Is that where that came from? Yeah. It has to be. It's, I believe it. That looks like a shot. No, it wasn't a shot. I was just asking. Oh, I don't know. It looked like a shot. Well, I'm just telling you. Maybe it was a shot and I didn't know it. Okay. <laughs> but it's true. They say, if, 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 like, women say if it's an ugly guy, it's a harassment, right? If right. It's a good looking guy. Do they? Guy, well, she's saying say the same that. thing well, with well, us? Well, no, it works both. Actually, it works both ways. It does work both ways. Yeah. But who would you rather have your ass grabbed by? Cameron Diaz or Cameron Manheim? I mean, so. <laughs> But it's the same thing. I, You're right. Janine's right. It does go both ways. It's, it's like I'm a hypocrite when I complain about that because I treat better looking women yep. differently. If I hook up right. with a nice girl, I walk her downstairs, I get her a cab. Give if she's her 50 fat, bucks. Yeah, I'll pay her. If she's fat, <laughs> <laughs> if she's fat, I yell fire and then close the door after she runs out. <laughs> See, there's a method to his madness. All right. Well, uh. That is the segment. I don't care if it's short. I don't really give a damn. We'll come back with something else. Let's face it, folks. There's also different standards among different cultures. Janine, for example, I've actually seen girls get, like, mauled by guys. And I go, what's up with that? She said, no, he's from Italy. He's from Europe. You know, like, that's okay because he's from Europe. Hey, I'm from Brooklyn. Can I grab your tent? You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't you think that different cultures allow women would be more allowing of a guy from Italy to touch them than a guy from uh, the show? I guess I just, I think, I think. It would show. depend on the person. It's a case by case basis. I don't think there'd be a lot of women that would be comfortable having, whether it be an Italian man or an English man, grabbing them or mauling them. If you're, if you're saying mauling, even I don't think all, anybody's comfortable with that. Even like an Afghani woman has not been touched. Hey, these next two Whoa. minutes of commercials. There it goes again. <laughs> the show is really finished. <laughs> these next two minutes of commercials should give you time to realize that we're doing a good thing. <laughs> Thank you. After the scintillating conversation I just had with my panel of comedians over there, in this last segment, I thought it might be more interesting if I talked to a seven-year-old. Say hello to Christina Ambry. Christina, hi. How are you? Uh, it's Christiana Cullen. Okay, Christiana. And uh, the uh, Christina, let me just ask you a couple of questions. Um, what do you want for Christmas this year? Uh, clothes and baby doll clothes and stuff. And is there something really special you want more than anything? A horse. Hmm. Are you going to buy your parents something this year? Maybe. Was it Christmas much more fun when you were younger? You didn't have other people to get gifts for? Don't you feel almost a sense of dread as December approaches now? They're crazy. Don't you think the fact we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior by knocking 25% off the George Foreman grill means that we've over-commercialized Christmas? Well, let me ask you this. Do you believe in Santa Claus? No. Oh. Is that because you're older now and you figured it out on your own or because you were never gullible enough to believe such a person could exist in a world with hatred and death and despair? <laughs> Speaking of which, why don't you tell me that story you were just telling me on the, uh, before we came on when you used to live on 8th Avenue? Uh, these guys were drunk and they kind of hurt another guy really bad and took all his money. And you said it was gushing with blood? Mm-hmm. Good. All right. <laughs> Well, it's the kind of things our kids are exposed to. I think we're really opening up something here. Don't you think it's ironic that uh, the place where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born, Bethlehem, is now the middle of where Jews and Arabs needlessly slaughter each other in the name of religion? <laughs> Even though this is like TV in an audience, am I boring you? I know when I'm being bored. I know when I'm boring a woman. Don't worry about it. Well, she's, you're part of Les Mis, right? Yes. And have you ever met Daryl Hammond? He's been there like 75 times. It's kind of scary. He's no. stalking your whole show. Well, being a Broadway star at your age, do you feel an obligation to give back to your community? Yeah. If I ever ask you to come on here again, are you going to tell your mother to make some excuse so you don't have to come? Well, yeah. you just do it for the money, right? <laughs> you think I'm a... You think I'm a mediocre talent because I was never in Les Mis and I can't sing and well, like, I am kind of a mediocre talent, don't you? You have no respect for me because I can't dance like all your little Broadway buddies. <laughs> have you ever heard of me before this show, like before you came that other time? Did you, did you know who I was, kind of? Kind of. 
<laughs> Do you know me from SNL? What's that? Oh, it's a show, Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah. You saw me on there a couple of times? No. Oh, people just told you I was on there, so you said, all right, I'll do this. So what happens? Your agent calls up you and your mom and goes, listen, this guy's got a show. We don't know if it's going to last or not. Well, now they do know, but we don't know if it's going to last. Why don't you go on there? It's a nice paycheck. Well, you know, you get like SAG minimum, whatever it is, after minimum, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, you said, ah, I'll do it. I don't care. Was it that kind of jaded thing? It was more like, oh, my God, Colin Quinn. You know, like when I was a kid, if I saw somebody of my stature, I'd be very excited. Um, you know... A Bruce Box Lightner. I don't know who it was. It was actually. But you seem uh, nonplussed would be too polite for how you seem. You seem almost revolted by my very presence. Well, I hope you have a Merry Christmas and, uh, you know, you can have these dogs if you want, or the M&Ms, or you know, the table. You can have my job. I don't care. But thanks for coming on. I think we've uh, really, you know, pulled the lid off the 8th Avenue beating. Folks, as much as I hate to admit it, if you turn the channel, it's going to really hurt my feelings. So please don't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, you may think I stunk in that last segment, but that's why I do the show for the kids. Now listen. <laughs> One of the things I love about the Islamic culture is the issuing of the death warrant, the fatwa. You know, like Miss World almost got one, the, one the, the woman that wrote about it, Salman Rushdie. They give over there, it's not that big of a deal. You get a death warrant like we should over here. Oh, there's like getting a parking ticket, you know? If you're a bad Muslim, you come running out of the pork store, they're like, sorry, I'm already writing it. I can't let it go. <laughs> now, I, uh, this is a typical fatwa, an intercepted fatwa. <laughs> and uh, it's a Christina Aguilera, you know, because over there they think she's crazy. It's got like, you know, Harlot, Jezebel, Carson Daly, RCA Records, Seven Jeans, you know, all kinds of things. I, uh... I issue a fatwa to the first person who ever heard somebody say, we're playing phone tag. Not the person that said it first. The person that heard them say it and then said, I'm going to start using that. And a fatwa to the person who said, don't go there. And the person who said back to them, I'm not even trying to hear that. And I mean, I'm glad you didn't laugh that much because I'm seriously mad. Um, <laughs> T. Sean, who would you issue a fatwa to? Um, well, I don't like issuing death to anyone, but the... The, the Catholic Church bishops council that couldn't come to a zero tolerance policy against <laughs> molesting older boys? Where's the gray area in having sex with a nine-year-old? Is it like, oh, uh, well, what was he wearing? <laughs> Did he look 14? No. Well, I happen to like their new three strikes you're out policy. But listen, <laughs> Nick, how about you? I wrote my doc because when Italians, you know, we kill people, we never put it in writing. So, oh. so. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent and merciful, I hereby issue a fatwa against Samuel Hirsch, the attorney who is representing the fat teenagers who are suing McDonald's, for the crime of using these kids as pawns in an attempt to line his money-grubbing, filthy, rotten, greedy polyester pockets, and for reinforcing the stereotype that Jewish lawyers will do anything to turn a buck, even if it's on the backs of 14-year-old boys who look like stars. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Jane End, uh, what's your fatwa against? I, I would like to issue a non-violent fatwa um, against Lynn Cheney for her uh, attempts to undermine free speech on college campuses across America. Oh. <laughs> James W. Norton. I was Is like your middle name W? <clears throat> or did I just make that up? I would like to issue an extra violent fatwa. Oh, ignored me. <laughs> he ignored me. Against Rosie O'Donnell for the crimes of being a self righteous, hypocritical, morbidly obese manatee with bad tattoos and no magazine. <laughs> Every time I hear the term cutie patootie, I wonder what a hammer would look like buried in her Easter Island statue head. Well, and folks, I'm there. not finished. Oh. <laughs> for six years, you had us believing you were nice and housewifey, when deep down, all you really wanted was to lay back while Madonna left a slug trail on your face. <laughs> well, I guess I... See, if, I had, if he hadn't cut me off, you would have missed that one, folks. I want to change my fatwa. To Jim? I want well, to change it's too my late. Fatwa. We have to get the hell out of here, unfortunately. Thank you all for the... Uh, 
Get on the jihad bandwagon, folks, yourself, and go issue your own fatwas to people that you don't like. We'll see you tomorrow.